Hello, my Bill for Thousand Nation. How's everyone doing today? Hopefully, everyone's having a great day. If not, I hope it gets better from here. We are back with another watcher. That's right. We are back with another watcher. This one is titled Ching Shi the Pirate Queen Puppet History. I don't know if I pronounced that right. I'm 100% sure I probably didn't. I'm okay with that. It happens. Let's get into the story. Go ahead, turn them lights down low, put on something comfy, come up with something special. Let's learn something today. Like, do the things I'm supposed to do before the things I'm not supposed to do. Yeah. Welcome one and all to Puppet History! Today we'll be taking an ever-winding look at yet another chapter in the heavy, heavy book we call History, while our guests ruthlessly compete for the coveted title of History Best. Yes. I am obviously your beloved host, The Professor! Thank you! Ryan Vergara, are you ready? Oh, you bet I am. Special guest and returning champ, Joyce louis -Jean, are you ready? I'm ready. Then let's crack in. I love this lady. She's so fun. Yes. Oh, God. I don't do math. I'm pretty, she said. <laughs> that has stuck with me since the video I've seen around the last time. That was great. Oh, fuck. Uh. To begin, what y'all think about boats? Yo ho ho or no no no? You know I love a yo ho ho, so go go go. I actually blacked out. I don't. I actually did not hear the question at all because it was so stupidly worded. Unbelievable. We're gonna start out like this, huh? Oh lord, you boys. <laughs> well, our hero today made her living on boats. More than that, she made oh, an god. empire on boats. Today, we're talking about Ching Shi, the most successful pirate to ever live. Yeah. Holy fuck, I got her name right. I win! I win! I get a I get a I get a jelly bean for that. Just just right off the bat, right? Right? I get a jelly bean for that, because I, I got it right. I, I didn't know I got it right. I thought I was wrong. I win. Yes! I love pirate content! I know, I know. Period. That's why I wore my little hat. Yeah, I was gonna say the hat looks great. Check it out, I'll do my best pirate impression. Are you ready? Please don't. <laughs> Actually, I got it. That was pretty good. <laughs> now, when I mention pirates, you'll be forgiven if your first thought goes to the tropical Yarr. isles of the Caribbean. I know you're a real Disney simp, Ryan, but there's more to pirates than the naughty knaves hanging around Tortuga. 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 Yeah, you also have Cutthroat Island. Tortuga. <laughs> You, you called me a Disney simp. I, I resent yeah, that. I did. Do you guys need couples counseling? You know, we could schedule some time later. No, I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Oh I just, I just wanted to let him know he's warned. Well, for almost as long as the world's had boats, <laughs> there have been pirates trying to steal stuff from those boats and move it to other boats. One place where there were and continue. <laughs> I love how you put that. Ever since there's been boats, there's been pirates that likes to steal from them boats and move it to other boats. I love how he puts that. To be boats is the continent of Asia. The 18th and 19th centuries saw increased sea trade on the western edge of the Pacific, along with, you guessed it, pirates. We've already oh. gone over the fact that pirates were awful, right? Not good people. You know what? I think it was kind of lit. You steal from the rich, you get to be around a bunch of big titties, you go arg arg, you don't take a bath, and you drink rum all day. I think titties is it actually a part of a boat. Oh yeah, like when uh, when a pirate says like, Avast! Man the titties! Yeah, or when a pirate goes, ah, look at the tits on that boat. <laughs> yeah, I definitely know that that's a naval term. Totally. These pirates were powerful, but uncoordinated and in need of a leader. Enter Ching Shi. While female pirates were not a I love her thoughts. I do. There's titties everywhere. Tortuga titties. Unheard of at this time, Ching Shi was nevertheless an unlikely contender for the job because she was employed not on a pirate boat, but a flower boat. Oh, 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 oh. Our first trivia question and our first opportunity for a history point. This one's open-ended. What was a flower boat? 
I'm gonna get this so wrong, and I'm okay. so proud of my. Uh, I'm gonna say it. It, it it's literally in the words of it, like. It's a boat that will take flowers from one continent to another continent to try to get them to flourish. I have no fucking clue. So, for being Joyce, we're, we're just here to go on an adventure together. There's no shame here. There's no pressure. It's just like <laughs> Reno all over There's again. Pressure. Oh, I forgot about Reno. Poor Ryan sweating bullets right now. There's pressure, people. Oh, we have fun. We did have fun. Fest. Little beef boy Ooh. couldn't make that one. Ryan, what do you got? A boat carrying baking supplies. Now you've interpreted that as F L O U R. Yeah, that's what I. That's what I'm taking it as. Okay, and Joyce. I put the instead of that, but a boat that transports flowers. You know what? We're gonna give a point to Joyce because she at least recognized that I was talking about flowers and not flour, the baking ingredient. So a point mm. for Joyce. Yay! Neither of you were particularly right, though. So I get a point three by default. Uh, a flower boat was essentially a floating saloon milling about the harbor. Aside from the usual hoochin' and smoochin', folks would board to be entertained with song and dance. Now shifting gears a bit. So it was a fucking riverboat? Like a riverboat casino? That's fucking awesome. Why did they call it a flower boat, though? <laughs> Oh, shit. According to an almost certainly untrue legend, in 1801, the fearsome pirate Cheng Yi decided he was done being a bachelor. So he went about finding a bride. How you imagine pirates would do that sort of thing? He kidnapped some women. Of this unlucky bunch, he chose Ching Shi. And when she was untied, she lunged at him and tried to claw his eyes out. Apparently into that, mm. Cheng Yi offered her treasures to marry him. Mm. Ching Shi countered, demanding half of his fleet. Mm. Cheng Yi agreed. Ah, love. Jesus. He sounds like the Ice King from Adventure Time. Oh, he does. I don't know Ooh. that we need to do this PSA, but don't, <laughs> hey, don't steal women uh, for, this is getting dark. It always does. <laughs> Now, by all accounts, Ching Shi transitioned from flower boat to pirate boat with skill and speed. As a husband and wife pirate power couple, <coughs> Cheng Yi and Ching Shi managed to bring together individual groups of pirates, with Cheng Yi serving as patriarch and Ching Shi acting as organizer. And were they ever organized? Much like some lame corporate team building exercise, their pirate crews were consolidated under color coded fleets. Black, white, yellow, blue, green, and greatest of them all, red. I know they're probably using this to wreak terror on the community, but you gotta love the Asian precision there. Making it very organized, color-coded, oh, everything's yeah. together. If they ever got into a conflict, everyone knows what their marching orders are. Honestly, I would just love the fact of being on the red boat, because I know that I'm that bitch, and I know that I should be riding <laughs> I'm the best boat there is. Are these boats actually the color? Or oh, I thought this was God. just like, you're the yellow team, you're the red team. Yeah, you know, I'm sure they had like little handkerchiefs or uh, bandanas oh, okay. or something. So they're like all wearing like yellow clothes, like, yeah. like power. Like maybe their flags or some of their sails are the, their, their designated collars. Maybe. Rangers or something? Yeah, I bet they look just like the Power Rangers. The Red Fleet was led by Ching Shi and Cheng Yi, while the others were commanded by lieutenants, each with a name more fantastic than the last. There was Bird and Stone, Scourge of the Eastern Sea, Frog's Meal, and the yes. best of the lot, Jewel of the Whole Crew. Hey, I got a question for a history point. What would your pirate name be? <laughs> I'm sp I don't know. <clears throat> I, I, I really. I, I never wanted to be a pirate growing up. I, I, I don't. I never put much thought into that. Oh, let's see. What, what, what? Come on. What would you guys' pirate name be? It's not easy, okay? It's not like your porn name where you pick your dog's name in the street that you lived on. Uh, 
Mm. Holy shit. My first dog, Hopper. The first tree I lived on. <laughs> Crabtree. <laughs> the Hopper Crab. <laughs> That's not a poor name you want. Okay, pirate name. Billard. Billard the Redbeard. Yes. Billard the Redbeard. Billard the Bald. Bro, that's it. That that's my fucking pirate name. I'm Billard the Bald. Spelling this wrong, but okay. you know what? I'm gonna live in my truth. Ryan, what do you got? I'm gonna be the scourge. The scourge of the seat. I love it. I like that. Choice? Um, I put Captain Queef. <laughs> <laughs> Stinky. Captain Queef is on the seven seas. I smell her downwind. <laughs> <laughs> A history point for Captain Queef. Arr! Oh boy. <laughs> now these pirate fleets wreaked havoc on southeastern China, especially in Guangdong province, where there was a robust salt trade to target. <laughs> Under Qing Shi, pirates would capture the ships hauling salt and then force them to keep working, but for the pirates' benefit. Salt merchants eventually found it easier to start by going to the pirates and paying them for the privilege of doing their jobs. So they're not getting paid, they're just like literally paying to not die. Yeah, essentially. So it's like the mafia. It's a protection racket or a racketeering, basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. This protection racket soon was expanded to other merchant ships and even fishing vessels who would receive documents that would assure their safety. Emboldened, the pirates didn't even stick to the sea. Hordes of pirates would descend upon a harbor and raid garrisons for supplies. I didn't realize that salt was such a hot commodity back then, but that makes sense. It's oh, good yeah. eggs. What uh, natural good would you guys uh, go after if you were pirates? Popcorn kernels. McDonald's French. I, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Oh, those would be good. That is a very natural good. It's it's a hundred percent organic. You guys didn't know, right? Now, going after popcorn might uh, get a little expensive after a while. Why is that? It tends to uh, cost a pretty penny. I've heard uh, sometimes they paid as much as a buccaneer. <laughs> You're suave, professor. The Chinese authorities were thoroughly outmatched. That's fucking good. That was a horrible, one of those horrible dad jokes, but I love it. And the Navy knew it. The cowardly yes. Cantonese Navy would routinely try to avoid coming across pirates or even sailing at all. What was the training regimen for this, this group of authorities? Avoid the pirates. <laughs> yeah. Here's how masts work. Here's how you rig the titties. And uh, yeah. that, that's probably where it ended. So then when they saw some big scary pirates coming, they were like, this wasn't in the handbook. I just want to rig the titties. I don't want to fight. <laughs> Eventually, Ching Shi and Cheng Yi were responsible for so much devastation that the Chinese government was left with only one option. Whoa! What did the Chinese government do? I don't even know. Hold on. You gotta hold the fuck on, Professor. Oh, God. Ugh. <sighs> Ooh. Oh, jeez. What did the Chinese government do? Oh, shit. A, they offered Cheng Yi a job. B, they issued history's first million dollar bounty for the heads of Qing Shi and Cheng Yi. Or C, they began constructing a second great wall along the coast. B, I want to say B. I'm going with B. All right. Are we locked in? Yay. Ryan, what is your answer? Go A, if you can't beat them, join them. And Joyce? So I picked B, the $1 million bounty. Okay. We got a fun little historical skit to reveal the answer. I'll be back in a second, guys. Enjoy. Whoop. Isn't there a Drake song where he's angry about a bounty being so low? Probably. I feel like Drake gets mad about a lot of things. 150,000 on my head, that's disrespect. Ooh, I'm upset. Ryan. Whoa. I'm upset. Rapper Ryan, I never thought I'd see the day. <laughs> oh, 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 those married pirates are making a fool out of me, the emperor! 
<laughs> They're the fools, your highness. Oh, shut up, footman. I need to do something. Ooh, how about a million dollar bounty for that old standby building a wall? Ooh, across the ocean? You're fired! Huh. Well, good luck finding someone else who'll work for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Emperor, Dingleberry. Anyone will work for me. Anyone will work for me. Wait a minute. That's it. I'll hire the pirate. <laughs> I really yeah. thought I had it for a second, but you know what? I that makes too. sense. Oh, point for Ryan! That's right. Basically, admitting he couldn't do anything to stop the husband and wife, the emperor offered Cheng Yi a position. See, that's where I was going with it. I didn't think, like, the emperor of China was going to be like, there's nothing I can do about him. I'm just going to have to accept him. Like, you can't begin to join him. I, I really didn't think an emperor would just roll over like that. <clears throat> in his government in hopes that he would stop his pirating. <laughs> Cheng Yi was appointed master of the royal Ooh. stables, a job specifically tied to land, <laughs> ostensibly to keep him away from boats and the ocean in general. This did not work. Cheng Yi was soon back to ravaging the Chinese coast, leading to what I imagine must have been awkward reports to the emperor, detailing how his master of the royal stables had sacked another town. So now he's doing, he's getting paid to pirate, essentially. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. baller, I'm not gonna lie. That's a power couple. It is a power, I That's like the badass. idea of being a pirate and then uh, someone trying to entice me with horses. I had a horse. What? Well, once you realize it. Ryan, shut the fuck up! <laughs> did you say Christ. you had a horse? I had a horse named Rose growing up. So did you ever like feed it sugar cubes or apples or? or... I did, I did. Sometimes <laughs> I put honey on the apple. I, put, uh, I would lick the sugar cube and then oh, I put God. it on the apple. And oh God. she would eat both. The hair is so long and luscious, and she would like put her head on my head, her forehead on my forehead. I know you said you don't have it anymore, but nobody like uh, cut its head off and put it in a Hollywood producer's bed. Absolutely not. I think okay. she just got new owners. Just checking. It oh, definitely God. isn't the plot of a movie. No. Okay. <laughs> All right, moving along. Oh, hey, Professor. Clop, clop. Clop, clop. Oh, horse, from our season finale. Yeah, I figured I'd stop by one last time to hype up my final performance. I just finished writing the chorus of my ska masterpiece, and I think, well, it's better than anything the Beatles ever done. Oh, wow, that's great. Hey, how do you even get inspired to write something like that? Well, I meditate on my beautiful horse wife, Muse, Dorothy Ruth, but I also poke around on the internet and look at cool pictures and whatnot. Hey, and speaking of that, I'd like to say a big horsey thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this episode. Now more than ever, our internet reliance has been rapidly increasing. We'd like to think our information is safe, but as our online hoof print increases, so does our need for proper security. Surfshark is a VPN service that protects your information by encrypting all the data that you send through the internet keeping anyone unwanted from seeing it and cribbing your incredible ska lyrics, for instance. Wow, another great reason to use a VPN is because content from streaming services can be restricted based on what country you're in. Yeah. With Surfshark, you can solve that problem by simply changing your location. Right now, Surfshark's got the best deal in the barnyard. By using my link in the description and promo code WATCHER, you'll get 83% off, woo! Which means for something like a couple bucks a month, you can be fully protected. Whoa, cool. Plus, you'll get three months for free. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so if you try it and you don't like it, well, you can simply cancel your subscription. Honey, you've got to rehearse some more. Oh, hello, Professor. It's me, Dorothy Ruth, the horsewife and beauteous muse. Are we interrupting? Uh, I mean, we were in the middle of a... Uh, My okay. husband's going to be singing such a wonderful ska song in the season finale. Has ska ever made you weep, Professor? Um, well, let me tell you, this beautiful, brilliant creature will make you weep like a child with his ska. Your cheeks will be wet. Oh, you're sweet. Well, all right, back to rehearsal. We bid you adieu. Click clop. All click right, click see click you later, guys. Click Thanks click for stopping by. Anyway, where were we? Ah, yes. For more than five years, Cheng Yi and Ching Shi ruled the Chinese seas as husband and wife, essentially unopposed. 
In November of 1807, they met their first major setback when Chang Yi was unexpectedly killed. Records vary as to how, with some attributing his death to a storm, others saying he died in battle. Either way, he is in hell now. <laughs> If the Chinese seafaring community thought their pirating problems oh, were going to get easier with Chang Yi out of the picture, they had greatly mm. underestimated Ching Shi. <coughs> Ching Shi wasn't just a pirate trophy wife; she had been just as, if not more, responsible for the empire than her late husband. Ching Shi moved to cement her position atop the pirate throne and quash any thoughts of mutiny. After securing the loyalty of her lieutenants in the color-coded fleets, she sought someone to lead the most powerful of the squadrons, the Red Fleet, which Chang Yi had previously controlled before being condemned to rot in the sulfuric pits of eternal damnation. So, what's your deal here? <laughs> I was about to say. Who did Cheng Shi tap to take control of the Red Fleet? A, the handsome leader of the Blue Squadron, jewel of the whole crew, who she took as a lover and husband. B, the admiral of the Chinese Imperial Navy, who she took as a lover and husband. Or C, her adopted son, who she took as a lover and husband. Uh, I was down for C. all the lovers and husbands, but an adoptive son too. C. That's a lot. That's a weird way to introduce. Cause well, okay, hold on. I don't, I don't want to say C because. I don't know all the information, but I do want to say, see, it was like if it was like his kid by someone else, you know, maybe that's like a descendant power thing. See where I'm coming? Do you, do you feel, do you feel what I'm spitting? I'm going to say, see, it's probably wrong. It's probably the jewel. Probably a watch it be a someone at a party. This is my lover, husband, and son. That's a lot to digest. Ryan, what'd you go for? I'm gonna go for C, incest. Okay. Oh, look at the way you did that. A fun little, just uh, having a little fun with incest there, huh? <laughs> I mean, who doesn't have, everyone has to have fun with incest, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, and Joyce? I put A, the blue leader. Point to Ryan, the answer is C. She wanted to spank his bottom as a child and as an adult. Now let me explain, <laughs> let me explain. <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> Ching Shi's adopted son turned husband was one yes, Cheng Pao. Yes, the actual yes. son of a fisherman, Cheng Pao became a pirate at age 15 after Cheng Yi captured him at sea. Cheng Yi soon took Pao as his protege and lover. Note, we do not endorse the actions of Cheng Yi. Don't steal wives, don't steal boys. Unless you want to rot in hell! It's not great. It's not the best vibes. Well, when Cheng Yi ate shit, the 21-year-old Cheng Pao was therefore the natural choice to take Cheng Yi's place at the head of the dreaded Red Fleet. Within weeks of the big guy's death, Ching Shi solidified mm. Chang Pao's loyalty by taking him as her lover and eventual husband. Um, wow. Look, we've said it before. Okay. We'll say it again. History's gross. <laughs> But I was fucking right. Can I get a high five? Oh, yeah. <laughs> We condemn! Her status atop the pirate hierarchy now secure, Ching Shi put rules in place to discourage pirates from stepping out of line. Insubordination could be punished by decapitation. Anyone stealing from the group's general fund was put to death. And even the word plunder was outlawed, replaced by the phrase transshipped goods. You know what? I like the organization. She's like, you guys have been acting really foolishly. If you steal money, you're dead. You want to plunder, you're dead. You want to do this, you're dead. I like her attitude. Now, Jim she's pirate horde wasn't- I like it too. Like, she she's, seems like a, a really by the books pirate. Like, I like that. I like that. That sounds weird, but I like that just about rules and bureaucracy. This was still, after all, a ruthless criminal enterprise and a massive one. So, at her pirate empire's peak, how many pirates were under Ching Shi's command? This is a free response, but for context, Henry Morgan, one of the most famous pirates of the Caribbean in the late 1600s, sacked Panama with a whopping 2,000 buccaneers under his command. So how many do you think were under Ching Shi's command? Oh, the, does she still have ships from, like, the, the Emperor? Because if she does, then that could be a lot. I want to say...
I don't, don't want to say she's as big as Morgan, though, you know? I don't know. I, I really don't know. Like, 1500. 1500 or below. Ugh. I can't make a decision. I'm an undecided Gen Z. I'm gonna go with 2001. A space Odyssey. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Choice? <laughs> I put 10,000. Okay. A jelly bean for Joyce. Yes, she is the closest. Between all six of her color coded squadrons, Ching Shi commanded 70,000 men across 1,600 vessels. Wait, you mean to tell me that she had 70,000 people under her command and she still was like, I'm gonna bang my son? <laughs> With that much power, it's little surprise the Damn. Imperial Navy had such a hard. She was Bobby Big Dick in it, bro. Oh. Hard time countering change. That's 70,000 men, 1,600 vessels. Holy shit. And she's pirates. For instance, in 1808, Ching Shi and Chang Pao received word from spies that an Imperial Naval officer, Admiral Kuo Lang, was preparing an attack. To counter this, Ching Shi sent a few of her boats out to draw Kuo Lang's attack. Once engaged, the rest of Ching Shi's fleet, who were hiding behind a headland, sailed out to surround her enemies. With nowhere to retreat, an intense battle ensued, ending with Kuo Lang taking his own life. Jesus Damn. Christ, how much did she outnumber his fleet? He was like, fuck you. You you, you can't take me because I'm going to take myself. You got to kind of respect that. I mean, that, that's what most pirates did, ain't it? Like, they, they don't want to be captured and have an enemy pirate torture them until they tell them all their secrets and shit. No, they just end it. That's the pirate's life. <laughs> It's a parse life for me. Oh, by a fair amount. <laughs> you don't know what the vowel is. Hang on. Let me check with our mathematicians. You got a good amount. <laughs> I, I don't know. He probably had a couple boats. About a fair amount. It's a, it's a, it's about a fair amount. Man, that's scary. Can you imagine that many boats coming around a corner? You're just trying to fair sail amount. the ocean blue, and then boop, 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 all these homies show up. They say, I'm taking your shit. And it's just so scary. <laughs> Learning nothing, the Chinese government sent General Lin Fa to avenge their loss. Oh, Once Lin Fa saw Ching Shi's pirates, oh. he lost his nerve and attempted to flee. The pirates, however, would have none of it and began to pursue the general's fleet. Uh-oh! When the pirates had just about caught up with the Imperial forces, the winds suddenly died, leaving both sides facing one another but unable to move in an eerie stillness. It's funny that there's this much firepower and because there's no more wind, they're like, I guess we'll just stay here for a second. <laughs> I kind of like how the pirates were like, oh, so you wanted to come fight me, ho? I'm gonna literally stab you in your face. You think you're gonna run away from me? I like that kind of violence, you know? You bring the fight to me, I'm gonna finish the fight. So, in this yeah. eerie standstill, what did Ching Shi's pirates do? A, they took whatever implements they could find and started to row toward their enemies. B, they began to sing about what they were going to do to the general's men, causing the entire navy to desert on the spot. Or C, they jumped into the ocean, swam to the other boats, and started a murdering. We're gonna I go say with B, B. Distract. They're gonna B. I want to say B. I think they, they, I think they start fucking with their brains because this lady seems smart. She's like, hey, look, why waste precious manpower and potentially someone getting murdered over all this bullshit? Let's just really, really get in their heads. I guarantee it. I guarantee fucking it. Like she, she just seems like. Baller, like, no lie. Meek Mill their ass. Yeah, I put C. They killed them all. Well, it's that time again to revisit history through the magic of theater. I'll see you guys in a bit. I really want it to be B, because I would love to know what the lyrics of the song are. Ugh. Ugh. Can you believe these cowardly Navy men running from us pirates after they wanted to start a fight? Ooh, don't worry, we've almost overtaken them. And then you know what comes next. Oh yeah, it's the murdering. Oh, it's you the betcha. Murdering. Just a bit further. Oh, darn it, the wind stopped right when I was getting my murdering knife ready. Uh, what do we do now? I don't, oh, wait a minute. Hey, do you know how to swim? Uh, yar. Well, then what are we waiting for? There's people over there waiting to be murdered. 
Cannonball! Whoa! Doesn't seem Dang. very tactical at all. You always want the high ground. Ask Anakin Skywalker. Got yeah. turned into a churro. Huh. Yep, point to Joyce. Ching Shi's pirates hopped overboard, swam to the Imperial ships, and climbed up the sides, capturing the boats and murdering the cowardly Lin Fa. On brand, yeah, on brand, bold. I guess you could be, you'd probably get pretty cocky when you're a pirate crew of 70,000. Yeah, no, I'd probably yeah. get to a murder in a little too quick. You think you'd be a little murder happy? You know, we all have a limit. That's why I stay within the secure lines that society has put for me. That's good. That's good. I get murder happy sometimes. This always happens to me when I play Warzone. I think I have the shot and I don't have the shot and then I still take the shot and then because of that, I'm dead now. Yeah, me too. <laughs> By 1809, Ching Shi was no longer content sticking to the seas and yeah, began that's... focusing more on sailing squadrons up Chinese rivers and plundering any towns along the banks. Now even inland villages had reason to fear pirates. This is usually where the person who gets greedy suffers for the folly of their ways. Yeah. Well, we'll see what oh, goes yeah. that way. Let's see what happens. <laughs> At the top of her game, but with a slightly worrisome fleet of Portuguese ships threatening the Red Squadron, Ching Shi started looking for a way to cash out in 1810. In a bold display of her power, she turned to the Chinese government to see just how badly they wanted her to stop constantly wrecking their shit. On February 21st, 1810, Ching Shi's notorious Red Squadron sailed up the Pearl River and began negotiations with the government to cease pirate activities. Soon, however, talk stalled. What was the sticking point in negotiations? Ooh. A. The government demanded Ching Shi return her transshipped goods, including a vibrating crate stamped Jewel of the Whole Crew's private loot, keep all genies away until at least 2535 CE. Oh, curious. B, the government demanded Ching Shi give up all her boats. Or C, the government demanded her son husband Chang Pao's head. The vibrating B. box that was the jewel that huh? the genie is not allowed to have. I don't know anything about that. It just, it seems really specific. I, I, I don't know anything, I don't know anything about that. Okay, okay. Right. I put B for no more boats. I put C, head. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Points to Ryan! Ooh, the yes. government was going to let everyone live, was going to let them keep their stolen booty, was even going to give jobs to anyone who wanted one. They just didn't want the ex-pirates having boats in the chance they decided to drop the X. Like what happened when they tried to turn Chang Yi into a horse guy. Ching Shi, however, had all the bargaining power, and so the government caved. She got to keep all her pretty little boats, and her men were paid by the government to quit pirating and offered positions in the military. She retired the same way she pirated, successfully. I mean, I gotta say she a bad bitch. She literally was like, I'm gonna keep my boats. I'm gonna keep my dogs. I'm gonna keep my cash. I'm gonna keep my ass alive. It's kind of the ultimate dream for someone to say, Bro. I will pay you to quit. Yeah. <laughs> After oh, She's a boss lady, like no lie. She got it fucking figured out. Proving herself to be a ruthless pirate and an even more ruthless negotiator, Ching Shi died in her 60s in 1844, having lived out the last half of her life in relative quiet. Between the massive pirate empire she controlled That's and so the cool. peaceful transition to retirement in her 30s, one would be hard pressed to find a more successful pirate, either in the past or the future. You know what, I actually love that. I love how like all of these female pirates that I've been learning about, they get to live full lives while all their dudes and their hoes die early from their They'll recklessness. Make Women make better pirates. Yeah, they know when to cash out of the casino. They do, mm. unlike the professor. No, oh, don't yeah. even get me started. Well, that concludes our history lesson. Poor I'm professor. going to go tally the scores and we'll see who receives the Covenant Cup and the title of History Master. While I do that, please enjoy the special performance from Ching Shi's Flower Boat. Whoa! Oh! Okay. But I sure do cry. Think about the gal who used to hang out on me. Now she's getting into trouble on the seven seas. Ching she. You traded city living for a piracy. You think she ever thinks about a crummy little junk like me. And your arms jealous of a pirate chin. But I don't blame her, not for one to did. She gotta be who she gotta be. Ching she. 
I miss the good old days, rocking in the hover to the morning comes. But now you're making way. Heard you really fucking suck into that government scum, and I hope you know that I miss you so. But I wouldn't want you hanging up your buccaneer suit when this watch is needing buckling and this booty to lose. Ching, ching. I heard some people calling you the pirate queen. It sinks me. I know you're out there on some other boat living, living your, your dream. dream. But I'm happy for your size of a crew. Even if it kind of gives me the blues, you gotta do what you gotta do. You're out plundering and I'm left wondering would a blubber in land up like me if I stand a chance and I'm the old I'm drowning in the ocean of my own emotions. Be the parting tide, carry the tears I cried to a ship as it slips near the indigo sky. was catchy as fuck. I liked it a lot. That was so catchy. Look at that pretty water. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Beautiful. Holy shit, what a performance. Now, let's see how we did. Oh boy, Encore. you guys are never gonna believe this, but this week's history master is Joyce Louis-Jean. What? <laughs> Go and fetch your coveted cup which you have so rightfully earned! The math throw that up, but okay. I'll take his shit. It never does, Joyce, it never does. I'm gonna get my crow feet. Very well deserved. So still keeping it up, huh? Still keeping, keeping it up Keeping season. what up? Yeah, keeping up the, the quality entertainment, yeah. Joyce, thank you for being here. Ryan, thanks for trying. And to the rest of you, thank you for watching Puppet History, where the details are always a little fuzzy. <laughs> we'll see you next time. You jumping good. As it dips neath the indigo sky. That was fucking great. I loved it. I, I, I loved every message. Oh god, I loved it. That was hilarious. <clears throat> Yeah, it really was. That was funny. Oh, shit. I love that lady. She's so hilarious. Uh, you know, to get out there and give them titties. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. <laughs> How was it going? Oh, that song was catchy. That was a catchy little ditty. I like it. All right. I really enjoyed today's video. If you all enjoyed today's video as much as I did, please go down there and leave a thumbs up if you're a fan of the spooky, scary, strange, deranged things that make you learn, laugh, and cry all at the same time. Think about subscribing. I usually laugh so hard I do cry. <coughs> Ooh. As always, be good to one another. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Wow. Like, she, she had it, like, that, she is truly a pirate queen, like, hell yeah, 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 bro, that's great, this lady was, like, out there ripping off dicks and throwing them at people, I love it, like, oh, that's, I love pirate stuff, that's, it's so cool, right?